Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn, and in this video I'm showing you how I'm taking my Dynamic Evo, which is my day driver, and upgrading it by completely changing the majority of things that are in there, transforming it into this. Now this is obviously quite a different view with a number of different changes, and I want to talk through what I've done, why, and the implications of things along the way and to show you some of the things that I've come across that might be useful if you're planning on building an aerodynamic or want some ideas on what to do to change it out. So the first stop was I bought myself a 3090 quite some while ago and I wanted to change this out for the 4090 that you've seen a second ago. So this is a gigabyte overclocked OC Vision card and it served me well with a lot of video editing, gaming, streaming and other things and, and frankly I still think it's awesome, so I'm holding on to it to use in other machines. But I wanted to swap it out for a 4090 because I spent a stupid amount of money on a, a Strix 4090, which as you can see, is absolutely huge. And this thing is a real powerhouse. It's perfect for my uses in terms of all the things I've said already, video editing, gaming, obviously testing out various things. I've used it to show how to fit it in various different cases, and I'm actually still doing that because I'm going to revisit that to show you whether you can fit this size of card in various different cases. So if you're interested in that, be sure to subscribe if you aren't already to see that. But here you can see it alongside the 3090, just to give you an idea of the sheer scale of the thing. Now, this isn't the only upgrade that I'm making, obviously. You've seen a few changes from those initial shots. So stick with me as I show you a number of different things I'm going to be doing here. But this is perhaps the most significant one and obviously the most striking. And this is a wonderful upgrade, although not one for everybody, obviously. And here you can see the results of it just put in the case in the standard format. So this is how I've been running for a while because I wanted to do some other upgrades, but frankly haven't had time because I've been busy doing other things. But you can see from multiple angles, it looks really nice in this position. Now, there will be some things that you will notice immediately one of which is that underneath the GPU, I have what looks like a tiny graphics card, which is actually an NVMe expander card that I'll get to in a minute. But something's been bothering me. People kept saying about whether that was blocking the cooling for the GPU. And actually, it wasn't really because the cooling was still really good on the graphics card, to be honest. It's been running really cool. And I'm going to do thermal benchmark tests in a separate video to show you the difference between the two setups so you can see the performance change. But I'm going to take that card out because what I'm doing here is I'm actually going to swap out all my NVMEs as well. So I've got a sort of mishmash of various different NVMe drives in there at the moment, plus a couple in this expander card. Now this is a, a Zeus expander card that allows you to put two extra NVMe drives in the PCIe X16 slot, and it can run really fast at Gen 4 speeds as well. And what that means is essentially I had six drives in there, but some of them are a terabyte, some of them are two terabytes. As you'll see, I've got a mix of Crucial, WD Black, Sabrent, and other drives in there. And they are for various different things. So one's from operating system, one's for games, one's for videos, one for gameplay videos from my gameplay channel. So I've got a good mix of drives for different reasons. But I wanted to be a bit more consistent with it. Crucial's kindly sent over a two terabyte P5 Plus. Now I'm going to slot that in the second drive bay down here. The good thing about this board, I'll leave all the specs of my build in the description if you're curious, is that it's able to hold multiple drives as well as obviously working with that expander card. And it doesn't seem to use less lanes for those extra NVMEs either. So they all run at the maximum speed. The bad point about this board is it is only Gen 4. It's a Z790 motherboard, but it won't run with Gen 5 NVMe SSDs. Despite that, I'm still installing the two crucial T700 drives, which are Gen 5 drives, in this board simply because they're two terabytes. So I'm going to rerun them at PCIe Gen 4 speeds, but never mind that. Now we have a collection of four drives, all two terabytes each, and all crucial drives. Crucial drives are really reliable. I've been running them in my system for quite some time. I purchased them myself for separate other builds. I'd, I'd highly recommend them. They're, they're reasonably priced, they're really efficient, and they last a long time. I've never had any issues with them. So it makes sense to me to install multiple drives in here, although the Gen 5 drives probably don't make sense because they won't run at Gen 5 speeds. But in the future, I'll probably upgrade to a new motherboard which will support it, so we'll see. So the next stop is I'm swapping out the SL120 V2 fans from Lee and Lee. I'm going to change these out and swap them for the Infinity fans. The reason for this is 
I just prefer the look of the Infinity fans. I think they're nicer looking. I've been planning to do this for a while. I've had the Infinity fans in a cupboard from a previous build. I've done a guide on those fans. And so I wanted to make the most of them. And in the meantime, while waiting to do this job, Leon Lee's also released the reverse fans as well. Now I'm also removing the front panel because I'm going to put a mesh front panel upgrade kit on there as well. So there's loads of changes happening here, as you can see. And I thought while I was doing that, I'd also change out the cooler. So that's currently an NZXT Kraken Z73, and that has been one of my faves for a long time. And I was hoping to upgrade to an elite version of it, but I haven't got the money to be able to do that at the moment. So instead, I'm swapping out for a Corsair H150i Elite Caplux with a display on it. Now, there's no real reason for this because they're both good coolers. They've both got displays on them. But I just thought since I'm doing the changes, I might as well swap it out, upgrade the thermal paste, give some changes in there. And you can see basically going through the process of that. And I wanted to clean off this thermal paste got some Noctua wipes, which I regularly use. These are handy little alcohol wipes, basically help you clean up your CPU and get rid of any thermal paste buildup on there. So I was cleaning that up. Now this is a Core i9-13900K from Intel. Obviously runs quite toasty, so do you need good cooling performance on it? So 360mm all-in-one is pretty handy to be able to do that. And the Corsair and the Kraken are both good coolers for that performance. Although, as I said, I'm going to do a thermal test video separately to show the difference the, the two systems have made, so the different swap between them if you're interested. But here I just wanted to show the process for it and the logic for it. So while doing this, I had to remove the back plate. So some first world problems here because there's a back plate that holds the standoffs in place for the all-in-one cooler. In order to access that, because of the design of the dynamic Evo, you have to take the motherboard off because you can't access the back plate because it's blocked. So to remove all the screws, lift the motherboard up, and then get that back plate out from the Kraken cooler to be able to replace it with the Corsair one. So first world problems going on here. I essentially have taken the majority of the case apart. The only thing that's basically in there still is the power supply unit and some of the cables that run in various different directions. So I have done videos on all the different things that I'm showing you in a lot more depth. So if you are curious about the setup and installation of them, I'll link to those videos in the description if you've not seen them already. But essentially, the process is basically the same as normal, although it's a lot harder to do while in the case. I was being lazy. I didn't want to take out all the cables. So I've left the power cables and other things plugged in and just carefully inserting the back plate in there using the sticky tape to hold it in place and then putting the standoffs in nice and tight to screw and secure everything down. Got to make sure that standoff system is set up and ready and also secured nicely because it's really important to get that pump secured down on top well, otherwise the cooling just won't work as efficiently. Now there are a few things about this case that are interesting. One is the flexibility of it and the ways you can build in it. So I'm going to be mounting the radiator on the side of the case and I'm also using Lee and Lee's reverse fans. So these are the infinity reverse fans I was talking about. So these are intake fans, but you can face them towards you. So the design with reverse blade design, which essentially means it's going to be pulling cold air through the back of the case, over the radiator, and then into the case. Now, this is one way of doing it, obviously. You could do it the other way around and have air exhausting out, but I prefer it this way around. I'm also applying a mix. So I've got a mix of fans here. We've got Lee and Lee standard Infinity fans, which I'm going to be putting on the top of the case because obviously they're going to be exhausting hot air out the top. So I'm replacing the V2 fans in there, but then I'm going to be using reverse fans on the bottom of the case and on the radiator. The idea here is that by the end of the build, as you'll see, we basically have Infinity mirrors throughout. So you, when you're looking into the case, all you're seeing is that glorious RGB looking back at you. So at this point, I'm just going through and check in that I've lined everything up properly, but obviously also swap in the direction of some of the fans. So with these top fans, fairly straightforward. It's a like for like swap. But in this instance, I'm doing it the other way around because now these are the reverse fans, which are going to be in place on the bottom fan tray. So I'm just going to swap those out. Now I'm obviously skipping some steps here because it took quite a while to do this. Obviously building in a PC takes a while. Unbuilding a PC, then rebuilding it takes even longer, especially while you're also recording footage for it. But I wanted to show you some of the interesting highlights of it because there are a few things along the way. 
And if you've not seen my previous Dynamic Evo videos, then go check those out because I've also talked about just the general sort of build of it and the things that I've found while doing it and the things that I wanted to do. So one of the reasons I wanted to do this was so I could do vertical mounting of the GPU, as you've seen. And initially I couldn't because I had that expander card in the bottom and that just basically blocked using a vertical mount because if you did do it, then you couldn't have both. So one small problem. So again, I'm replacing the NZXT Z73 with the H150i Elite Capilex from Corsair. Now I'm mounting it on the side of the case. I've done a video recently on the proper mounting of all-in-one coolers with thermal tests to show the performance difference. But historically and generally, I found that this is the best sort of mounting position for it. And no, you don't need to worry about air bubbles. And I've shown why in that other video. That, as you can see, the rear of this case actually has enough room for push-pull, so if you wanted to put extra fans on the rear, you could do that. I did think about doing it, but I didn't do it in the end because it would have meant more controllers in here, and by the end of it, there's going to be a lot of controllers and a lot of cables at the back of the case, so I knew it was going to be a bit tricky. So one thing I'm doing is I'm replacing the bracketing, so it's got AMD brackets on it at the minute because I've already used this recently in a different build, and then obviously... I'm going to be installing it on there. Now, this pump requires some extra loving, which I'll get to in a second. For the thermal paste, I'm using Cryonaut paste this time around. And the idea here is obviously I'm trying to improve the entire system. So I've cleaned off the old paste and now I'm going to use Cryonaut. I've also done a video separately on the best thermal paste application, or at least the things not to do. So a lot of people would have told you historically to use a pea-sized amount in the middle. I've actually shown that that doesn't spread enough on these more rectangular CPUs that we have nowadays. So what I prefer to do is to use the spreader that's included with the Cryonaut and just spread it across the entire CPU. You need to make sure there's a good thin covering across the entire heat spreader because that ensures good thermal conductivity and the dissipation of heat from the CPU through your all-in-one cooler and then better thermal performance. And this is an i9-13900K which will run hot and it does do. And as I said, I'm doing, I'm doing some tests to show you the difference between these two setups. And in both instances, CPU still runs hot because that's just how it is unless you undervolt it. And that's the way with the i9s. But if you push them to their limit, but the 360 mil radiator still does a really good job of cooling it under standard use. So everyday use is perfectly fine. And seating this back on top. Now, another thing that you will note is that the tubes aren't in the way of the RAM. So another reason to switch or at least change the design, is the Z73 tubes, if you had them on the right-hand side, they're pushed up against the RAM if you had four sticks. That's not the case with the Capilex cooler. There is one consideration, though. With this, we need the Commander Core XT, which I need to fit in the back, but I'm not using any of the power or RGB connections on it, so there's quite a large control box that's pretty unnecessary, apart from the control of the pump head, the lighting, the screen, and other things, so a bit of a faff. Also, I'm going to end up with loads of different devices that require USB. So I'm using Corsair's USB hub, which can take four different USB devices and put them into a single USB connection once you've connected SATA power. I also need SATA power for multiple different things. The Commander Core, the USB hub, the SL Infinity controller, and the Strimmer controller, which I'll show you in a second. Now, one of the other things I'm doing here is I'm swapping the I.O. kit out for it. So with my case, I don't know if other people have had this problem with Evo, but I found that the USB ports on the front got damaged and don't actually work anymore. So I took the opportunity to purchase the additional I.O. kit. Now, this is meant to actually give you extra USB connections. What I'm doing is using it to replace this broken one. You can see one of the ports is defective. Also, the USB-C one doesn't work very well anymore for some reason. Bit of wear and tear, regular use on those front connectors has just worn it out. Luckily, it's pretty easy to replace. There's a screw on the insides that holds it in place. Then it's held in place with a clip. Then you just need to work all the cables out, which is a bit of a faff. Run them through, obviously unplugging them from the motherboard, pull them all out, and away they go. One thing of note is the difference between these two kits is that the additional one doesn't include a front panel 3.5mm connection. So there's no 3.5mm audio output for that anymore but that's not really a problem because you can just plug into the motherboard anyway it's not an issue for me certainly 
because I mostly use USB. So just rerouting this system basically and plugging that into the front. Now, it's nice that the flexibility of this case that you can do this. And as I said, this is actually meant as an additional one. So if you look on the underside, you'll see there's actually various different mounting points. So if you have a motherboard with multiple USB-C and USB-A connections on it, or if you use splitter cables, you can theoretically add more ports into your system. So you could have four USB A's and two USB C's in there potentially at different angles, one on the side, one on the front. Pretty neat system that you can do that. And that's one of the nice things about this. The other thing I want to talk about quickly is the proper mounting of cables. So I've done videos previously on how you can swap out cooler fans with Lee and Lee ones. And obviously I've swapped Corsairs fans for Lee and Lee's Infinity fans in this instance. So I just want to quickly show the logic of it. So they've got a single cable that comes with the single fan. It has an RGB cable on it and a power cable. Now the RGB cable is the tricky part because you need an adapter. So this is an adapter, RGB adapter, which Lian Lee sells as an accessory kit. It's a five volt header cable that can plug into the sync port. So there's two sync ports on the Lian Lee Infinity fan controller. If you plug that cable into there, and then plug it into the RGB cable that's coming out of the Infinity fans. You can then control the lighting from those fans from the controller. Now, in my mind, this is preferable than to using the flat controller cable that comes with the triple pack, because it then means you can plug in the fan power cable to the CPU fan header on the motherboard. What this means is then the fan power is controlled by the motherboard of the fans that are on the radiator, while the RGB is still synced with everything else in the case. So it just makes for better yeah, CPU cooling because the pump is plugged into the all-in-one pump header. Now the other thing I'm doing is I'm replacing my power cables with streamer power cables, the 24-pin power cable and the PCIe one for the graphics card, although more on that in a second. But this plugs into the rear, and as you've seen, it uses a controller. Again, I've done a video separately on both these things. I'll link to those in the description where I go into a lot more depth on how you set it up. But essentially, it works as an extension cable if you don't know already. So you run your standard PSU cables into this cable, and this cable goes into the motherboard, and then it just gives you some nice RGB lighting, and you can control that via L-Connect. So just syncing it all up with the lighting on your fans. So I'm planning on mounting this GPU vertically, so I was trying to work out how I was going to put this cable in there. If I ran it through the rear like this, which I thought would be the neatest, I realized you wouldn't actually see much of the RGB, which is a bit of a downside. And then I tried mounting it on the front instead, and I realized doing that, I'd then be blocking some of the fans. And so I ended up just not doing it, as you've seen at the beginning. I, you could do it, I think, but then you'd have the cable running across the front of your GPU blocking the fan and just being really in your face. And I didn't want that design in the end, so I abandoned it and just went with a 24 pin. Also, as you can see, the rear of the case is also getting pretty crazy in terms of the cables. I haven't cable tidied and I don't for this exact reason in that I often switch things around. So criticize me all you want, but the airflow is still fine back there. You can shut the door and just pretend there's no shame back there as long as it's not going to cause a danger in terms of cables being loose or anything, then it's fine. Obviously, I'm also running all the other cables to the rear. So for all the other groups of Infinity fans, I'm using the standard flat controller that comes with a triple pack of fans. So that means the reverse fans and the normal Infinity fans are all connected up to the controller. And then, as I said, I've got the RGB syncing from the fans on the radiator. So you can see the flat cables just plugging into the other ones and then the syncing from the radiator. So it just gives you that good sync of RGB lighting. So I removed the front panel earlier because the other thing I'm doing is swapping out and we're going with a mesh front panel instead. So this is another option and an another additional purchase for the Dynamic Evo, but one I wanted to try out because I'm trying to improve the airflow. Obviously I've got a big graphics card and I want it to run well and I wanted to see what the difference would be and what the style difference would be. So this is able to hold either 120 mil or 140 mil fans. And as you can see, it basically involves putting two brackets on the front where you've taken the glass panel off and then you mount your fans to that. So I stuck with three 120 mil because I just prefer the aesthetic. I've got 120 mil throughout the case, so it didn't make sense to use 140. I thought this would be preferable. Now I've actually faced the infinity mirrors outwards. So this is the standard infinity fans. 
I could maybe have used the reverse fans on here instead and had them intaking. Because let's face it, when you've got the mesh panel on there, you're not really seeing the infinity mirrors anyway. So if you prefer to see the infinity mirrors and you have your PC in a position where you can actually see the front fans, mine doesn't as a standard it's set off to an angle. So I only really see the interior fans, not the front ones. So it doesn't bother me. But perhaps you could do it that way. You can see from here, we can see the back of the fans, but on my desk, I don't actually see it, so it's not a problem. Now I'm vertically mounting the GPU, and again, this is another purchase from Lee and Lee that you can get separately. It's a vertical mounting bracket. Now I actually covered this briefly in my original Dynamic Evo video, because I did originally plan to do it. But as I said, I didn't end up using it, because it would have stopped me using that expander card. And I noted how low it is. Now if you see here as well, I'm putting it in the case and you can see that the bracket for it is right blocking that bottom rear fan. But you can adjust it. So you can adjust your GPU in where it sits in the bracket and also the height of it. So you can raise it up. If you move it up too high, you risk blocking the cooler display. But there's a nice middle ground, I think. I've got it in a pretty good position here where it's not blocking the fans and I can still see the cooler. Now at this angle, it maybe looks like it's blocked, but by the finished shots you'll see in a minute, you'll see that it actually isn't, and you can still see the display. So now I've lost the expander card at the bottom. There's still not room for that, but I have better airflow because I've got more air blowing from the bottom and air blowing from the front. And I think the GPU looks nicer, although there are some things that I'm not happy about with it. Obviously, I can't have the trimmer cable on there, so I'm using the Corsair standard 600 watt cable that I've got instead running at the back, which keeps things kind of ni nice and neat. But there is a little bit of sag on the GPU. Now the GPU does come with an anti-sag bracket, which is basically a magnetic screwdriver. You can see I've jammed that in the corner of the case because that was the only way I could get it to reach. Weirdly, when it was in the standard position, it was possible to put it right at the end and it wasn't an issue. But here I can't fit it underneath there. So I've had to sort of tuck it into the corner of the case at an angle and push it up into the corner. It still works and it's kind of jaunty, kind of looks cool, I suppose. Uh, but the end result is this. So I'm pretty happy with how this has come out. I think it looks really nice. The display on the Corsair cooler is capable of showing both GPU and CPU temperatures. So you can see those at a glance or GIFs if you prefer. Obviously the infinity mirrors now with reverse setup look a lot nicer because you can see all the mirrors from every angle and the GPU is set far enough back that it's not going to run too hot. I have had other people say that maybe the GPU might blow too much heat on the NVMe drives and maybe the pipes from the AIO, but I'm going to test that out and see how I get on. But generally, I'm pretty happy with it. Let me know what you think. Thanks for watching. You've made it right to the end of the video, you brilliant legend you. If you've enjoyed it, click that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up and drop me a comment down below if you've got any questions. If you really enjoyed it, consider joining the channel and see the benefits of doing so. Check out these other videos. You might well find them interesting or useful. And most importantly, have a great life.